In this video, we will finally write Hello World in Haskell. Yes, it only took us 15 episodes, and I think this is uh, very unique to Haskell, how long it takes in order to talk about input-output, or I.O. for short. But we actually needed that time because all of the things that we learned um, will sort of be thrown out of the window for this one. So, yeah, let's look at it. Okay. So, hello world can be written with the put string ln. Put string ln will gets a string and then writes it to the standard output with a new line appended to it. Great. So, something interesting to look at is that we can save the result of this in a variable. Okay, doesn't really make sense, but we can do it. But now the strange thing is that, well, this um, HW has some type called IO with this, well, empty tuple. And also, if you write this into your interpreter, into GHCI, you will not get an output. So the question is, what is going on? Well, let's look at this type first. The empty tuple is a special type which only has one value, and that is the empty tuple. The empty tuple is used in order to signify that whatever we have here is basically nothing. We have no information because, of course, there is only one value for this type, so there is no information to be had. The interesting thing might be, what is this I.O.? Well, this I.O. is what we call an I.O. action. And we should look at that a bit more closely. So... When we now write down hw and basically ask it to be evaluated, it then prints hello world. Well, this is very strange, isn't it? Because this looks like a function, but we don't give it any arguments. But still, it is running every time we type hw. So what is going on here? Well, that is the beauty and maybe the horror of IO actions. This hw right now looks like this, where we have seemingly no input, where we have maybe some output of this empty tuple, and then we have some interaction with the environment, in this case standard output. But of course there are functions that also read, so uh, they can also read from the environment. Now, what we have here is basically a black box that interacts with the environment and then uh, has some result. But the important thing is that we can never get to this result because it's encapsulated as an I.O. action. Why do we actually need that? Well, if HW was a function, then it could not work with the environment because functions in Haskell have to be pure. This is actually the reason why the first versions of Haskell didn't have input-output at all. Haskell was not able to put out anything. Now it is possible with this I.O. monad, as it's called. What monads are, we will uh, talk about a bit later. But okay, so what we know now is that this HW is an I.O. action that seemingly gets no input and then works with the environment in, uh, in some way. So let's maybe look at another I.O. action, which has a different type, get line. Get line reads one line from a standard input and then, well, can we ever get to this input? Yes, we can. So let's look at an example. For this, we use the do notation. As we can see here, this greet is not a function. It is an IO action. That is the important thing. What we do here is not function application and not function definition we define an I.O. action. So, okay, what do we actually do here? Well, this greet action first will ask us what our name is with put string ln, and it then reads one line from standard input. Now, you might see that this is very weird syntax for Haskell programs. Well, in the do notation, you can actually think of the statements written down here as strictly evaluated, meaning put string ln, the first put string ln, will be evaluated before name equals get line. But now the question is, what is this arrow? Well, if we are in an IO action, 
which we are, greed is an IO action, we are already encapsulating the environment from the rest of our program. So that is where we can actually work with the result of get line. Get line again is an IO action, an IO string action. In order to get the string, we need to be in another IO action, which we are. We are in greed with the do notation. Also very important, in order to have this sort of strict evaluation, we need to write do. There is no other way of doing it. Okay. But after that, we can actually print the name. So this is how you do input-output in Haskell. Also important to know is that let bindings still work in the do notation. You don't write the in because now you don't really have a expression where you can evaluate this because you only have IO actions. But let it be known that let bindings are still lazily evaluated within the do notation. In this case, we use the to upper function from the data.char module in order to uh, capitalize the name that uh, we get as an input. So let's look at this greet IO action in action. So here it is asking us what our name is. And after we supply it to uh, this um, action, it will greet us. Great. So it might be interesting to ask the question, well, we have just seen how within an IO action we can use this arrow uh, to the left in order to get the value of an IO action. But is there a function that can actually do this? And the answer is yes, there is. It's called unsafe perform IO. But there's a reason why it's called unsafe. Because you should not use it. You should basically never use it. The reason for this is uh, because unsafe perform IO basically disregards this environment that we encapsulated within the IO. And this could lead to all sorts of uh, different behavior that we don't want. You should have a really good grasp on what your actions are doing because they basically have to be pure in order to not cause any problems with unsafe perform IO. So I would advise against using it. Okay, maybe let's look at another example. And in this case, we are also asking a question. If such a function like unsafe uh, perform IO is not allowed and we want our Haskell program to do some input output because let's be honest, uh, every program should do input output, then our main function is not really a main function, but a main IO action. And to be quite honest, yes, this is the case most of the time. You don't really have main functions in Haskell. Most of the time you have main IO actions. Okay, so let's look at this program, for example, where we have some more interesting program flow because within the do notation you can still use if and else. And here we see another statement that we haven't seen before, a return. Now, what is happening here? Well, we read a line from uh, the input, then we check if the string uh, was the quit string. If not, then we just write this input back to the user and restart this um, IO action, basically. This is like recursion, because you can do this. You can recursively um, call your IO actions, but be aware that you have to use the do notation in this case again after the then because you want to do some sequential um, work with the put string ln and main. And else we return something because the question now is, well, what do we actually return if we do not do anything, right? Uh, at some point, we want to stop with this IO action. At some point, we want to say, okay, the user has written quit, so now we quit. And in this case, we can return something. Returning means that you encapsulate a value, in this case, the empty tuple, in this action. This is the value that you give back in your action, basically. 
Again, this is encapsulated as the I.O. action. Okay, and here we can see this I.O. action working. It is still possible to have arguments, as we can see in this count I.O. action. It is int to int to the I.O. action. And here we can supply it with an N and an M, and it will count uh, from N to M. So something like this.